Hello everybody, this is Source Codex, aka Jazz Fusion Guy, and this is going to be one of my how-to videos. I just purchased uh, an e-stoke 30-inch digital electric Smoker Pro from Amazon. This was actually my third order. First order got canceled somehow, not by me. Second order that arrived, they sent the wrong one. So three times is a charm. Finally, the correct one arrived. So we're gonna be doing somewhat of an unboxing and uh, talk about a seasoning the smoker before you get ready to use it. When you open her up, the first thing you're gonna see Right on top of the packing material and the smoker itself, you're going to get uh, all this social media invite as well as the manual will be inside. And uh, this one comes with a remote, so you're going to get your uh, batteries as well. Take your first level of packing out, you're going to see your smoker here and the various uh, controls uh, on off temperature timer and your meat probe and all these other indicators and controls there's a light as well for inside now on your standard uh, lower level entry smoker you're not going to have all these controls because it doesn't um, feature the things that are here as well as this one has a glass door which we will see later now this thing's about 50 pounds so you're not going to be able to uh, deadlift this right out of the box you're going to have to turn the box on its side and uh, slowly pull it out if you want to keep the box in case of a return issue I uh, hope I won't have that issue but uh, I'm going to play it safe and keep the box because uh, Amazon will not pick it up at your house unless you've got the original packing intact with the item inside. Believe me, I've already done all that before. Um, <clears throat> okay, we're going to try and get it out. Hang on. Okay, I've got the box tipped on its side. And I'm uh, using the original packing material that was on the top to uh, give it a little bit of an angle to pull it out easier. It's just the way I'm going to do it. You don't have to do it that way. Once you get it out of the box, which was a little tricky, I had to have help have someone hold the box while I pulled the unit out just because it was awkward and this packing material on the corners had a lot of friction with the uh, box itself so I've got two suggestions if you want to keep the box and get it out by yourself without help uh, tip it on its side like I showed earlier slit the bottom of the box fold the flaps out then set it back up and then lift the box up off of the unit and that works too if you have to return it for some reason you'll just be taping both ends of the box together all right let's uh unveil this puppy okay once you get the uh plastic off and the outside uh goodies off you're going to see through the glass door all the stabilizing foam uh, there'll be a box with all the goodies inside probably racks uh, grease tray water pan drip pan place where the wood chips go and all that good stuff so let's get on into it and I notice when you take off these uh, cardboard braces that keep the door from bouncing around you get this crap left on the door which is I mean it's really it's really firmly on there 
but with a little teasing and work it looks to be like uh, rubber cement of some type so I'm not going to use a tool to try and get it off or solvents or anything like that I'm just going to use my fingernails and there it is so my hypercriticalness worry <laughs> is over now here is your meat probe and this plugs in right here on the side your temperature probe for your meat I don't believe the standard version includes that and now we will get this out oh that's going to be a two-handed job I can't do that holding the camera hold on that was easy enough to get the styrofoam out in the box with all the goodies we'll look at that later and there's another styrofoam uh, do, -jab do jobber here which has probably going to be the remote yes there it is okay here is your uh heating element where all the action is there's where your water tray goes here's where a uh, grease tray goes and then here is going to be a uh, kind of a drip pan you'll notice though there's all this um crud from the styrofoam packing so it's advisable to get all that stuff out Sorry about the bad filming. But anyway, you know, something like this, dust off, will do a good job. Because you don't want that stuff melting and, and cooking inside of your unit. All right, now it's time to do what's called a seasoning or a pre-cleaning of your unit before you use it. Now to get into your uh, battery compartment for your remote, this belt clip, you just slide it over, and there you go, that's where your batteries go. Pretty no think. So I put the batteries in the remote, it's got a nice uh, straightforward pretty easy to read readout you got your on and off set temperature set time meat probe and your light so the unit replicates everything that is uh, this unit the remote replicates everything that is here so here's your uh, manual I I've already downloaded the PDF file to my iPad. It's really easy to understand. Very basic. Um, the English is good and makes sense. Assembly is really straightforward. You're going to put the handle on the back. And what's nice about this unit is it's got wheels on the bottom. So you can roll this around. Um, <clears throat> So, the first thing you're going to put in is your grease tray. It goes right in the front where I talked about earlier. Then the next thing you're going to put in is your water bowl. And then your uh, smoker box where your wood chips go in. And then there's the bigger drip pan which you put in the bottom right there. And then they talk about where to put in your meat probe how to put that in to be able to use it <clears throat> and then the last thing you do is put your trays in so that's pretty easy and it talks about your control panel which is good general operating 
uh, of this, that, and the other, your remote, how to clean the thing. And it talks about minimum internal temperatures for different kinds of meats, which is nice. Um, and it talks about your different uh, smoking options uh, using hickory, mesquite, oak, maple, apple, cherry, and all your different kind of uh, meats you want to use that. Seeing as I ordered that three times, I am way ahead of the game, and um, I'm loaded up with wood chips, uh, mesquite, a couple of hickories, and um, an apple, and I've got a cherry on the way from Amazon. And the big brown box that came inside has basically got, basically have three boxes in it. Here's your uh, grease tray, and inside is your drip tray. Here's your water pan. Water's important while you're smoking to keep your temperature consistent. And here is the smoker where you put your uh, wood chips in. Let's look what's in the other box. I bet it's got racks in it. Well, the bottom of the big box does not have another box. It's just got your racks. Now, the next thing I'm going to need to do is it's recommended to do something called seasoning, which means there's invisible but very likely probable leftovers from manufacturing uh, nasty oils or who knows what. But you don't want to be smoking your food and get that in your food. So the next step is to season your grill. And it's a couple easy steps, the items that you're going to clean. And uh, they recommend wiping it down with uh, some mild soapy water and I'm going to use just to be safe um, a micro fiber cloth that I've got here and I've got a mix of uh, it says glass cleaner but it's actually uh, water with a little bit of soap in it and I will use that to clean things up and then you go back over and you clean up your soap residue and uh, you make sure that you get all that off with the water and then they say let that dry so what you do after everything is clean and dry you set it to the max temp for this unit which is uh, 275 degrees Fahrenheit Close the door, of course, first. Set your temp, and you let it run for two hours. And then you're good to go. Then you're ready to smoke. One thing I forgot to mention, when you're doing your cleaning, you're breaking this thing in, seasoning it, you do not spray soapy water or water on your heating element. Leave that alone. So I'm going to cover up those holes with uh, some cardboard or plastic or paper or something. All right. Ciao. Another thing I failed to mention that I discovered while I was cleaning and that a review on Amazon said to be sure you remember because it's not that clear, but inside, up in the ceiling of your unit, is styrofoam. Now that would have been a mess if I had run the temperature at 275, so you got to take that out. I just thought I'd mention all the things that I suggest cleaning. Again, the meat probe, a good wipe down of it the smoker, the drip tray, the grease tray that goes in the very bottom of the unit, and the water tray, a good clean down on it, because all, all these things are going to get heated up. Um, and I would just do the drip tray just out of playing it safe, clean it up. 
And then you've got uh, one, two, three, four racks. It says to wipe these down as well. Now to go over this cleaning, the first time use, we've talked about the damp sponge and mild detergent, wiping it down. Be careful not to scratch any surfaces. I recommend a microfiber cloth. And then you open the unit like I talked about and let it air dry. Now the next thing is using cooking oil spray or a small amount of cooking oil on a cloth. Wipe down the inside of your smoker with a light coating of oil. Do not coat the smoking box, heating element, grease tray, or water tray with oil. So none of this stuff gets uh, oil on it. Make sure the water place water pan is in place with no water, and the smoker box is in place with no wood chips. Open the vent, which is here. You open this guy take that off that's like a smoking setting but for your pre-cleaning you want it open all the way okay and you keep it open the whole time it's cleaning and um, it just tells you how to turn it on yada 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 after two hours you power it down, allow it to cool, and after the cleaning process and smokers cooled down, the smoker is ready for use. All right, signing off for now. It's time to get cleaning again. She's uh, air drying now. I used the uh, the little ad for Facebook to cover the. Uh, the uh, heating element. I don't do Facebook. And I've got all these cleaning and they are now drying. Discovered something. You know, I found the handle here and I thought, where are the, where are the bolts? Where are the nuts? How do I attach this thing? And I looked through that whole box and all the bags and all the boxes and then something said they're probably on the back of the unit and indeed there they are so you just back those out put your handle on and you're good to go and a few other things i wanted to mention here's how the handle looks put on didn't take anything and of course it comes with a cord but i thought i would let you all know how long that cord is and we're looking right at uh, 68 inches even with the outlet so um, five foot eight inches and the thing they emphasize is not to plug this in to a regular house plug but you're going to need a GFI outlet now, when I watched a whole bunch of other YouTube videos about this, uh, many guys were using an extension cord. And if my five foot is not enough to reach over there, I can always get a heavy duty extension cord. As long as it's heavy duty, you'll be okay. You don't want to use some crap extension cord with this heater. Well, just as I mentioned earlier in the video, Amazon just drove up and uh, delivered my cherry wood chips. Well, the inside of the smoker has been fully cleaned and oiled as well. As the manual said, you don't oil any of this. None of this could oil. But I'm going to oil the racks as well. And as far as oil goes, I didn't want to use a spray oil. I want to use something that's pure. So olive oil will do just fine. 
And you don't need a whole lot. I'm going to use that much right there. And as far as how she looks, getting ready to go, you'll notice this short length of cord here. Um, only reaches so far up to my GFI plug here. That's fine. So, here's what she looks like. Ready to go. Here it is, completely assembled. Your water tray, your uh, smoker here. Excuse my fingers. Your drip tray, your grease tray there, and we've got the uh, the probe, the temperature probe. And it's got a nice little place in here where the probe stays. Now I thought it was unusual that the wire doesn't seem to have any special place to go, but once you uh, put this on and shut her down it's uh, excuse me it's it's tight there so that'll work just fine <coughs> so let's see what happens when I power it up <coughs> okay we got power <coughs> excuse me <coughs> And there's your uh, <clears throat> ambient temperature right there with 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit, it is a cool February day here. Let's see. Okay, so we're ready to uh, start the full temperature seasoning. Set her up to 275 for two hours. Oh, I wanted to do a quick test and see if the remote works. And there it is. Perfect. Off. Off. One uh, last observation I made. I went ahead and turned all the lights off in the garage and shut the garage door. And I've got the light on, and as you'll see, there's no real lighting inside. But what is helpful is when you open the door, you've got all this nice illumination. Should you need it, late at night out on your porch, or if you don't have lights available wherever you're doing your smoking, uh, this is helpful. Well, here we are again. It is time to crank this thing up to 275 for two hours. Now, I've got my heat probe in there that I wanted to season as well, but if it hits 250 before or 275 before the two hours is up it's going to shut this thing off so I am going to unplug it so now let's get our temperature going let's up it Oop. my mistake all right 275 all right and then time uh, okay it's blinking but I guess that's okay now I don't know yeah it's set okay time two hours yes I'm believing that's two hours I probably should read the doggone 
directions but we'll see what happens okay the working light came on and it's saying it's uh, 59 degrees inside of there and that's about right for the temperature in the um, the garage here I'm trying to see whether my timer is going to count down or lessen <clears throat> let's see I'm just curious what we've got here yeah this says uh, 58 8 that's pretty close to 59 excuse my finger all right so I'm going to keep a look at this. Oh yeah, it's counted down now at uh, one hour fifty nine minutes. So I guess we're good. We're still at fifty nine. It has been going for four minutes now, and it's gone from 59 degrees up to uh, 64. And I'm, I don't know whether you can see it or not. I saw it just a few minutes ago. But um, I'm getting smoke. There you go. Coming out of the vent. So it's doing what it needs to do. We're up to 66 now. Let me double check that with my uh, reader here. It's probably reading the, the glass. Let's see. Whether this would be an indicator of anything if I could shoot inside here. Yeah, 59.9. And this says it's at 68. Excuse my finger again. So. The good thing to know, which I wanted to know, is it is indeed heating up and it's counting down just like it's supposed to. So, whatever they have, wherever their temperature sensor is located inside, and I have no idea where that is, but it says the internal temperature is uh, 69 degrees Fahrenheit so it's gone up 11 degrees in six minutes okay we are up to I don't know whether you can see it 231 231 now it's 233 and we have been cooking for a little over half hour. Shouldn't say cooking, I should say seasoning. And we still have stuff coming out. Well, we're back with uh, 55 minutes left and the temperature right now is uh, 200, 260 degrees Fahrenheit there's a little bit of that smoke that burn off gas is still coming out <clears throat> and I can still smell it it doesn't smell <clears throat> uh, like anything bad or chemical, it smells more like oil being 
burn that cooking oil but I talked with my wife just here recently and we discussed the fact that it hasn't reached 275 yet it's been going a little over an hour but my logic is this it said to set it at 275 let it run for two hours uh, but I feel like this if at the end of two hours <coughs> I've still got anything burning off anything still coming out of the vent here then I don't believe it's really done seasoning and because it took um, this long it's been running over an hour and it's still shy of 275 I feel like what would make the best sense and be the safest is when it's at 275 and it shuts down because it's on a timer I'm gonna crank it right back up set it to 275 and I'm gonna set it for at least another half hour or so and let it run then in my opinion it'll be completely uh, seasoned and ready to go and we're gonna do a lot with this today uh, I'm not going to tell you what all meats we're going to put in today, but uh, when they get going, you're going to see it in another video. We'll talk about the results. Oh, one other thing I wanted to mention, which is important to you folks with uh, children and pets and whatnot, or either... Uh, people that don't have too many wits going look at here we're at 266 and it is not dangerously warm on the outside when you get towards the front like right in here it's warmer let's check the door the door is not bad let's check the glass now the glass, that is something you want to keep your kids away from because that is pretty darn hot. So yeah, watch your kids, watch your pets, they don't need to be touching that glass. But the outside, okay that's just a safety tip okay we have about 18 minutes left and the uh, temperature has gotten up to 273 now I mentioned earlier how it was safe to uh, touch the sides and the top Have to wait for this to get to temperature here. Anyway, this is saying around 91 degrees, so it's warm, but it's it's not hurting. Check the side here. Again, about 91 degrees not dangerous let's check this glass oh baby look at there yeah we're looking at about 208 degrees Fahrenheit let's try a, a different angle see if we get anything different Yeah, right near the glass, it's 141, 133, but you get right on that glass. 
yeah, you're going to you're going to burn yourself. So keep that in mind. All right, we'll check back in in just a bit. Been looking on the internet of things you can smoke. Man, you can smoke a whole lot more than just uh, meat and corn on the cob and poultry and fish. You can smoke sauces like ketchup, mustard. You can smoke nuts in here. You can smoke like a, a bit of Gouda cheese. Do your own smoking. Some people smoke butter. And there's even technique called cold smoking. Let you Google all that stuff up yourself. But there's a whole new world of cooking going on here. Looking forward to it. I noticed here when I was looking for... Uh, where the 30 inches came from. I couldn't find it anywhere in the book, in the manual. But I noticed it's really nice here. They've made it convenient. If you want to claim your three year warranty, you just scan this code and you're in. Yeah, once you uh, <clears throat> scan this, it takes you right to the website. You enter unique product ID number, which I'm not showing. Name, address, phone number, date of purchase, yada, 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 location, and you're done. You're registered. It's simple. Took me about five minutes. Well, we are at about one minute to go. Temperature's around 271. <coughs> I'll see what happens when the time runs out. Run the countdown. I'm not smelling too much of anything, but we're here in a garage with the door open. Okay, now it's switched over to something called Keep Warm at uh, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. So how long that runs, mm, I don't know for sure, but trying to see if there's much coming out of that hole there and I am not seeing any more fumes or vapors coming out I can uh, get a faint smell but just to be double sure we'll run it for 30 minutes more and then we'll be ready uh, to do some smoking well my uh, half hour of extra high temp seasoning is over and the unit has switched over to 120 degrees Fahrenheit for keeping things warm the uh, the vent door is not putting out any more smoke or fumes. It smells pretty clean. I don't get any strange odors. Now I'm curious to see what will happen temperature wise if I open this puppy up. We will lose temp. There's no doubt about that. Let's put this right here. Like that. Okay. A lot of heat coming out. Let's see what we got in there. I'm getting a reading of about 193. Down there at the bottom, 
243. The wood chip holder. I'm getting a reading. Oh, about between 235 and well, now it's going down. If I leave this door open long enough, it's going to stay down. Okay, about 170. And again on the floor, 214. So let's uh, close her up again. Okay, well, my lovely wife has gone off to buy some whole chickens. I think we're going to start with that and uh, a set of ribs from our local butcher's market. Well, later has returned. I feel like this video is long enough as far as being an unboxing and uh, talking about seasoning and various controls and um, all the various things I came across as I was working with this and um, I'll make a separate video for the actual cooking and uh, it won't be nearly as long as this one is but uh, so far I r really like the investment that I have made in this and I will put a link in to where you can get it on Amazon as well as the main website for uh, East Oak products. Happy smoking!